that the microphones are working. All right, uh, if we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Uh, uh, uh. Councilman DeWitt, if you'd lead us, please, in the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> okay, we know that Councilman Schlecht is going to be a few moments late, but uh, roll call, please. Councilwoman Karumba? Here. Councilman DeWitt? Here. Councilman Mayor Simmons? Here. Councilman O'Brien? Here. Councilman Gibson? Councilman Forbes? Here. Okay, uh, public comment. Anybody from the public wishing to make a comment at this time, please come up. Good morning. Good morning, Honorable Council. Um, I'm John Pano. I represent the Downtown Alliance. Um, I'm coming here today and speak on behalf of the Alliance and members of the Alliance on the tree, um, trees that will be planted along the new strip of redevelopment along Old 41. Um, we had a couple of uh, requests, suggestions, or observations, however you like to put it. Um, one is the, the deciduous trees, the trees that drop their leaves periodically, um, cause uh, extra cost for the merchants and, merchants and the city in the long run. Uh, just in, in hiring uh, people to keep the streets clean and to blow the leaves around and uh, maintain the, the appearance of a clean street. Um, second, uh, the cost and damages to sidewalks and streets from the roots of these trees. Uh, after a period of time, you have to go in and remove the trees and remove the roots and redo the sidewalks. Um, third, uh, one of the big facts along this corridor in particular is they obscure the fronts of the buildings and the signage that's on and in the buildings. Um, it's a especially uh, perplexing to the merchants along this a corridor because we aren't allowed to, to fly like flags or banners that say open and things like that. So the trees are really obscuring um, our, our businesses. And fourth is uh, the fact that we would like to be unique from a lot of the developments and things that are going on now. And we would like to look more like the old Florida, historic Florida of times with the, the palm line streets. Um, that's about all I have to say. And um, I thank you for listening to me. Great. Thank you, John. <clears throat> yeah, good morning, Rick Steinmeier. Um, you've got a projection for the uh, payback on this uh, project of 5% uh, a year. And I took the numbers that were in this uh, on page 6. And in four years, you're looking at a 56.6% increase in the property values. I don't know if that's, that's six, 14% a year. And I'm wondering whether a 5% a year for in the long run is a realistic number as far as the uh, increased property value of that area. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Anybody else from the public? Good morning. Good morning, my name is Bob Finnis, and uh, I'm at the uh, Tree Advisory Board, and there has been some discussion, I understand, about some of the vegetation along the old 41 corridor. So um, we looked at uh, some possible changes in any trees that you want to make. I guess there's been some concern over the understory of the trees that would block signage and identification for the regular businesses so we came up with uh, some possibilities for you um, one would be the Jamaican dogwood it's a, a very good tree in terms that has less intrusion in terms of its root structure uh, you'll get more clear understory higher canopy probably give you some good clearance for the signage um, the other tree is a blolly tree, and the third one would be a paradise tree. Uh, our, our particular um, request, not request, but our, our particular uh, tree that we like would be the Jamaican dogwood. It's uh, very sturdy, and it's a native tree, so shouldn't have any issues. 
Uh, in terms of palms, some of the palms you have out there right now are are probably uh, uh, satisfactory for what you want. They they give you some tropical feeling. Um, we have some other ones. We have the Bismarck palm, the Canary Island date palm, and there's some other palms. I can have the tree board um, send you a list if that's what you would like. Please. Um, if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to uh, answer them. Great. Th thank okay. you. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll get with you after, and please do send in those um, recommendations. Surely. I'll give you some specs on them, too. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much. Anybody else from the public at this time? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on um, to discussion of downtown. Uh, Carl, you want to get us started here? Thank you, Mr. Please. Mayor. Appreciate that. A um, <clears throat> couple of things happening this morning. Um, finishing up on some of the infrastructure and, of course, the tree discussions. Uh, from the uh, the last time we met and also getting into the financial aspects of the downtown um, We are I know extremely limited on time this morning, so we'll get moving right away. So Matt Good morning council. My name is Matt Feeney public works director I'm just gonna keep it quick and introduce Tom Barber from Agnoli Barber and Brundage to pick up where we left off to discuss stormwater uh, the stormwater permit and as well as the functionality and some of the costs associated with it and then we'll move into uh, some new things that we found out about the bridge for consideration by council and then finish up with talking about uh, what we've discovered in terms of some landscaping options for the uh, council to consider great thank you Matt good morning good morning Tom Barber Agnoli Barber and Brunich so as Matt said, these are what we're going to go over this morning, drainage, um, Imperial River Bridge, and landscaping options. So this slide shows the conceptual permit boundary, uh, which is the black boundary. Uh, to the north, it extends to Rosemary. To the south, 41. The white boundary is the actual drainage basin that the stormwater within the system outfalls through. The stormwater management system is made up of four different outfalls, three to the Imperial River and one to Oak Creek. The pervious paver parking detail is the, the main water quality treatment um, source for this project. It's made up of a rock trench system, um, a perforated pipe, which forces the stormwater to percolate in the soil. The exfiltration trench volume totals 121 acre inches, which if you look at it over the entire stormwater basin is about an inch per for, for the whole area. The available credits associated with that are directly related to the, the water quality and the nutrients that will be removed from the system. And those amount to 243 kilograms per year of nitrogen, 43 kilograms per year of phosphorus. The total project cost is about 6.33 million for the construction costs related to this. And here's a cost breakdown. The water quality portion, which is made up of exfiltration trench, pervious pavers, inlets and manholes, totals approximately 1.2 million. The conveyance system, which is the, the pieces that get the water into the water quality system, made up of reinforced concrete pipe, inlets and manholes, curb and gutter, totals approximately 2.1 million. The restoration and rebuild of the project, which is basically to put this system into an existing site, and includes asphalt, basin subgrade, sidewalk and driveways, totals roughly $3.3 million. So the subtotal for the construction costs, 6.33 as stated before. And then also included in the cost is the design and survey, construction engineering inspection. Each of those roughly 280,000 for the design survey, 261,000 for the CEI. So with a grand total of $6,877,231. So here's 
a quick example of a one acre parcel. This particular parcel is undeveloped, so it's all pervious area right now. Um, if a developer came in and put an improvement on this parcel, the water quality breakdown allows them to build up to 95% impervious area. So if you take the buildings, the parking lot, the sidewalks, all the improvements that you would normally see, they only need 5% of green space to have a pre-verse post scenario work with the water quality we provided. So taking that example into consideration, um, it, it would use about 2% of the available total credits for the entire project, given that it's an undeveloped parcel. Now typically, these parcels are developed or do have some improvements on them, and in that scenario, they would only use 1% of the available credits. So, any, any questions related to the water quality portion? Council, any questions, comments? Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead, Pete. This is helpful, Tom, thank you. Um, just real quick, um, so when you take your bank and you've got, what, two areas down there, one is, what do you call the border area, and you call the capture, the, what's the border area? Black versus white, I think. The black yeah, is the a conceptual permit right. boundary, so the stormwater permit that you have. Right, you can use that. That is, that is the boundary for that permit. Right, so you can use it in that area? Correct. Is right, okay. Correct. So you have a ballpark estimate for just on your rough back of the envelope math, the acreage downtown within the, let's call it the work area. Right. Uh, how much free board is there over on top of that coming out of this, uh, the credits that you have? So the, the drainage basin is about 120 acres. Okay. So you have about one inch over that whole area that you're storing. All right, but one, all right, so, but you would, you gave an example, it's 120 acres. So you gave an example of a one acre parcel uh, developed uh, using 1%, undeveloped using 2%? Correct. So does that mean that pretty much these credits will be used up in that, what did you just say, 120 acres? Correct. Well, okay. if, the, if that 120 acres was built out. Okay. Yeah. And the 120 is what, Tom? The 120 acres is an estimate of the space where? Not, not on all 41. It's, it's the drainage basin. The drainage boundary. basin. So all the water that flows into the stormwater system. Gotcha. Okay. So that's, that's obviously outside of U.S. Old, 40, old 41, it goes Right, old. yeah, right. There, there are portions that are outside of the improvement area. Right, <coughs> all right, that's helpful, thank you. Sure. You know what, it might be helpful, can you just kind of point out those roads a little bit? Point out the roads as Well, as I'm sorry, with, within the drainage basin area. Okay, so here's 41 right here. Okay. Sorry, old 41. Old 41, right. right. How many acres are on, or however you want to do it in, in uh, space, on Old 41 and Feltz, let's say? In other words, the central area, however you want to define it, the central area where all the work's being done, where we're looking for the real development. Any idea of that? I, I think Matt would probably know better. Matt, do you have an idea? <laughs> I have a, a guesstimate. Um, oh, good. But, yeah. but our blocks are, are roughly two acre blocks. Already. So, um, borrow your yeah. pointer there, Tom. So, uh, if you count uh, the area, this is old 41, this is Feltz. Yeah. So, if you count this out, you, you've got roughly about 14 acres right here. All right. In this stretch. Between the two streets. Between the yeah, two right. streets, yes, sir. Right. All right. So, it gives you, you know, a, a sense of, of where that is. Yeah. And so, th there, is, there is free board in this uh, credit thing. Yes, yeah. yes, there is. If, if that is the area that you're, you're focused on folks plugging into the system, right. there certainly is free board. It's, it's essentially designed across, uh, to be able to be utilized across that entire black boundary. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks, Matt. Council, any more questions, comments? Mike, Steve, no? Okay. Thank you. Great, thank you. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, again, my name is Andy Powell with Wright Construction. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, Imperial River Bridge and uh, 
Make sure I got this correct here. There we go. Back to that. Uh, and what we found out about some, uh, some ideas brought forward by council and discuss a little bit of that. Uh, don't want to go into too rehashing a whole lot of what we did in the past, but basically we're, we're charged with creating uh, an aesthetic effect, a, a focal point in the project with the Imperial River Bridge. And we're also uh, charged with trying to keep that budget below $1 million or at that $1 million level, uh, providing a decorative finish and open railing effect to the, uh, to the bridge and providing lighting as well as uh, landscape and planter hangers uh, to, to help with that aesthetic effect. We did bring along uh, today a, uh, an example of the tabby stucco that will be the finish of the columns and the side of the bridge. Uh, this, when, we, when I get to that, I can show you where that'll, that'll be applied. Uh, the original concept, again, was to widen the bridge. We, we, we abandoned that concept because of cost, and we're working with the alternative concept of using the existing bridge and, and rehabilitating the existing bridge to bring in the, this aesthetic effect. Uh, so you'll notice we're dealing with 51 feet uh, out to out on the bridge, which will provide us as, with two 8-foot sidewalks on each side, two 11-foot travel lanes, a minimum traffic separator as well as two foot shoulders on each side of the road now and that difference in cost is a million four is that right the difference in cost of the wide going to the Versus, wider bridge correct down to this is is approximately a million four right? okay thank you sir yeah thank you uh, so our original concept was to use an open railing system, a cable railing system, <coughs> and we were asked to do two things by council. One of those things was to look into using glass railing, and the second one was to be able to create more bridge deck area, sidewalk area, by cantilevering uh, the, the handrail off to the side. Um, we did look into both, uh, and, and I've got comments on both. But this, these pictures kind of give you a, a, what the aesthetics will look like on the bridge with either the glass railing or the, or the cable railing. Uh, I've got a few, few other pictures that uh, we'll see here in just a minute. But it gives you kind of an idea of, of what the aesthetic effect will look like uh, and that we can maintain within the budget. I'm going to talk about the cantilevering first. Uh, Vince, who was here last meeting to talk about he's our structural engineer bridge engineer did come back yesterday with good news on the cantilevering saying that we would be able to cantilever up to 18 inches on each side of the bridge if we were able to use lightweight concrete for the sidewalks and the the uh, columns as well as the curbing uh, which we can do it increases cost a little bit it's not a significant cost impact but Gaining 18 inches on that deck is a big deal and, and, and a, a very good recommendation that we can accommodate. Uh, however, with that recommendation, we cannot use the glass rail because the glass rail adds weight as well as uh, wind loading to the bridge that, that we couldn't accommodate with the, with the uh, lightweight concrete. Now, as it relates to the glass railing, that would be kind of an if-or situation uh, if you if you like the glass railing effect, <coughs> that could be used. We just couldn't use it on the cantilever deck, and we'd have to maintain that 50, 51 foot depth uh, width and eight foot on each side for the sidewalks. And just real quick, with the glass railing, I see what are those every four feet or six feet maybe. Wait, I don't think those. we've gotten that far, but it pro probably you're going to have vertical posts every six. I, I, and, and and that would be necessary, absolutely. As opposed to the, what do I want to call it the. The, the waterfall effect, just plain glass. That Correct. probably wouldn't Correct. work. Okay, yeah. thank yes. you. Uh, these are some pictures of, this is downtown Fort Myers, the, the cable railing. Uh, this is a project we did for the city of Fort Myers. This is an example. Uh, I had told you, everybody, that we would be bringing a mock-up example today. We do not have that. Uh, we, our, our, our fabricator Demerits. <laughs> yeah. Well. Let me explain. <laughs> it's still demerits. I'll give you okay. that much. But I'll tell you what, the, uh, our fabricator did bring it over for us to take a look at yesterday, and they did such a bad job on it, <laughs> I, I wouldn't bring it down here. So it was, oh, okay. we just, You're it was excused. a quality All right. issue. 
so, but at any rate, uh, this will give you a, an idea of the difference between the cable railing and the glass railing. Uh, one thing I want to mention, though, is what these pictures don't depict is there is still a, a vehicle railing that's, that's on the uh, outside of the shoulder between the pedestrian mm -hmm. rail and, and the roadway. Uh, that is up to 30 inches tall. It will be, it's a custom fab uh, railing. It is not the, the typical what you're going to see in FDOT type bridges, but a custom fabricated railing that's uh, very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I'll entertain questions and, and hopefully get some direction on what, what you all would like to say. Council? Councilman Forbes? Yeah, I, I have a question. That is, with the lightweight concrete and going with the cable rail, you can go 18 inches by cantilevering the, actually the sidewalk off the... Yes. Uh, if you were to go with the glass rail, <clears throat> is there, is, can't you at least cantilever eight inches or a foot? I'd have to take that back to our design consultant. Uh, My guess is you, <coughs> you, you probably should, I mean, could, and so I, I just, is there any difference, significant difference in cost between <coughs> the glass rail and the cable rail? I, I don't know. have enough, we, we've gotten one quote on the glass rail just, mm -hmm. just to give us an idea yeah. if it would fall within the, the ballpark. Uh, I, I'm not comfortable with the number we got because I don't have any engineering on it to say yeah. that, that that's, but it, it doesn't s appear to be a significant cost increase, although potential cost increase yeah. for the redesign and the engineering as well as the, the, the glass. Uh, we did discuss the pros and cons of, of the glass railing compared to this and, and uh, you know, breakage, uh, maintenance. Uh, there, there's some concerns on using a glass rail yeah. uh, that, that we, d we haven't really vetted that at this point in time, but it's certainly things that when you're considering, you can, they're pretty, pretty simple to pick out what, what those concerns might be. Right, right. Um, Fred, some more, okay, yeah, go well, ahead. No, I was just gonna make one comment. If I had to, I think it's truthfully more important that those walks be as wide as they can be because there'll be people fishing off that bridge, biking, sometimes both directions and walking and then you got the kids effect so right if I had to pick one or the other I'd go for the wider walks skateboards segways whatever else might be floating That's around right. that yeah <laughs> segway man <laughs> reference to Mike Gibson. yeah <laughs> uh, Mike yeah go ahead Mike um, on the glass is it actually glass or is it plexiglass no it's glass Maybe because Tempered I've seen glass. other instances where I guess it's a plexiglass and people carve into it. And Correct. I, I've seen a lot of vandal issues with glass before. It, it I think it'd be more appropriate in, in another location, personally. But we're here to we're here to build what you like. And and how thick is that glass? Well, that's one of my problems that I'm not the. It was a half inch plate or half inch not plate but half inch tempered glass. I don't, and that hasn't been run through engineering okay. at this point, so I don't know that that's, would be the end product. All right, and Pete, or Mike, anything else? No, I'm with Fred, I'm for wider with the cable instead. Right. Pete? I'm just wondering, Carl, what staff view is? Or is there? Um, well, Matt's gonna come up and give you his view, and um, then I'll give you my view. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming it may well be the same, but go ahead. <laughs> um, 180 degrees, no. no. <laughs> Most likely not. Um, the uh, we've the concern would be some of the issues about feasibility, you know, with with the design. But really, it's maintenance. Uh, the concern would be if it's tempered glass. At some point, somebody will vandalize it, and it, it will be a fairly emergent condition at that point because you'll have a free communication with the bridge deck and the and the water. And so that weighed against, as Councilman Forbes pointed out, the, the width. Um, this additional. Eight, 18 inches of width really gets us back to the original intent of the wider bridge deck. You, you get pretty darn close to, to what those original designs were and really increases the mobility for folks using the, the space. So our recommendation would be to continue with the, the cable stay railing. Okay. 
Uh, Carl. And I agree with Matt yeah, about right. that. <laughs> um, well said, Matt. I think, it, I think it makes sense to go wider and yep. keep the cable. Yep. Yep. Great. Steve, down the scent. Uh, no, comments, thoughts? Greg, Amy? No, I, I was uh, concerned about the maintenance, and I, I would be in favor of the cable, and certainly mm -hmm. the width is very important. We don't want any free communication. Yeah, free communication <laughs> with the way. All right. Jeez. <laughs> I do have one last question. Uh, Fred, go ahead. Are, are yes. you sure that you that there is a code that requires that those cables be what was it three three or four inches? I think it's side? four, but yeah. uh, I I can double check with our consultants, but uh, I'm fairly certain that is correct. Yes. Yeah, I know on buildings there's such a thing, but. I wasn't sure if it, it existed. Uh, it, it, it's all related to the drop off behind the distance of the drop off behind the rail. Yeah. And I can't remember the exact code, but I'm, I'm fairly certain. But I'll verify it. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Great. Council, anything else? That's good. Okay, great. Thank you very much. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning. Kevin Mangan with Stantec. And uh, I'm going to uh, follow up here with the uh, landscape. Uh, conversation and uh, here uh, you have what is uh, basically the original uh, concept plan that uh, truly is today being installed if you will in the project and what you have in this plan and these are the plans that came to uh, many of the public meetings uh, that we had in, in design of this project is a mix you see a number of palm trees uh, palm trees here in the sable palm uh, and and our oak trees which we're focused on today uh, what we had done uh, previously and what we had seen in really the design and the development of this project uh, is we had visited many communities, um, you know, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Los Olos Boulevard, uh, mm. Hollywood, uh, with uh, actually it's angled parking in, in streets and landscape, um, and then also uh, Fifth Ave in Naples. And this is one of the places that you had asked us to take a look at. And so we had done that uh, again last year uh, in, in the development of this uh, project. Uh, you'd ask us to take a little further look. Uh, Fifth Ave was one of the locations and, and it obviously has remained the same as a mix of landscape. Uh, Sarasota, we took a look at a couple places. Uh, Main Street as well as St. Armand Circle. Uh, really the sort of a mix of landscape here, palms and trees. Here much heavier uh, a tree and canopy feel in uh, Main Street downtown. Uh, Jupiter uh, was one of the locations here at Abacoa, uh, really a, a, a dominance of the palm tree, uh, and the understories here, uh, crepe myrtle. Uh, this, this is a mix, but the formality of that street really is played through with the palms. And uh, Weston was another place uh, in uh, town center there. Again, a strong formality of, of the palm uh, in, in a heavy trunk palm down the edges. And then uh, the street tree and the canopy tree uh, is, is made integral to, but uh, uh, less the dominant form, if you will, at the street edge. So uh, with uh, that direction, we've taken a look at the plans as they existed. Uh, and have made modifications uh, as such. And there's, there's three colors uh, really here in, in terms of the trees and palms. The, the darker green is the uh, oak tree locations. The lighter green and yellow, uh, what we are doing here is we're saying, we're proposing in these areas where there are oak trees, if you get close here, you could actually see that the oak tree symbols are still behind on the plan, but we, we colored the yellow palm on top of it. What we're saying is, is let's remove those oak trees for palm trees. Now what we're doing is we're, we're reducing the number of oaks in the project, and this is the core part of uh, downtown, and uh, maintaining some of the street trees. And most of that street tree involvement uh, on 41 is around the intersections. Here it's some mid-block crossings on Reynolds and Childers and a bit on Ragsdale. And then again, uh, on Feltz Ave, you'll see 
the mix, uh, which is unique because Feltz was not a mix. Feltz was simply street tree, simply the oak tree. And now we're mixing that but maintaining some of those oaks uh, in this modified proposal, uh, again, for some of the shade characteristics and other things. On uh, the south end of the project, uh, the same is true. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the four side streets here uh, are all palm trees. So uh, again, we're looking at the identification of intersections. Uh, Oak Creek Bridge, this is a little bit unique as there's a, there's a large stand of oaks here, so we're working with that. And then again, you'll see on Feltz Ave uh, the introduction of the palm tree. What those modified plans represent uh, are, are a number of things. On Old 41, where we have uh, 300 trees and palms in the project, currently 60 of those are oak trees. This modified plan removes 30 of those oak trees, and uh, in place of that, those yellow symbols that we were representing added 58 palms back in, in their place. On the side streets, uh, we have 144 trees, and palms proposed 28 of those are the oak we've removed four in the modified plan and, and replaced those or suggest replacing those with 11 and on felts where we were all oak trees uh, at 42 we've removed 11 and introduced 39 palms for those oaks what the modified plan uh, represents is a 50 percent oak tree reduction on old 41 35 percent oak tree reduction across the entire project uh, it does maintain uh, the urban street form uh, with a mix, as originally proposed, of oaks, accents, and, and palms. Uh, we maintain the oaks in areas of shade and structure. Um, too small of a plan to see, but usually in relationship with those oak trees, there's a, there's a bench, a proposed bench location, I should say. So again, some of the pedestrian comfort I talked to before. Um, <coughs> The north of the Imperial River Bridge, which is rather unique cross section on Old 41, there are no oak trees, and that this is purposely why I didn't represent that in plan form. It's all palm trees. Part of the reason it's all palm trees is is that most of that is an open curb cut for parking. There's just very limited space there, and where we do find space, we're simply using the palm tree. And what I we think that was kind of with that Abacoa over in Jupiter. You know, you, you, were the, you were tight on space on that one example, so you, they kind of went up. They were, exactly, and, and what they have there, uh, and, and, and we don't have, and so the landscape provides the architectural form, if you will, when it's installed on, on day one here. They had the building form, the four and five floors to deal with, and they went vertical and narrow. Right. Exactly right. Great. Uh, so the modified landscape plan also, uh, you know, we, we had said to ourselves is if, if we step back and look at this, maintain our mix, and it, but mix it differently, <laughs> adding palms and removing oaks, we think what we're representing here we can do uh, at basically a no-net cost. In other words, the palms that we're looking at to replace the oak trees, they are in the job. Uh, the Montgomery's and the Sables, we move those in and out as appropriate. We haven't determined exactly where yet, but... Uh, we can do that in a mix at the price point that those cost the job and at the same price point that the oaks that we're removing. The other two options that um, we, we think are, are, are viable, leaving the modified plan, if you will, adopting the modified plan and now saying we have, uh, I forget the number exactly, but I think it was 85 oak trees left in the project. If we were to replace all those oak trees and understanding that where we've left them in the plan are forming structure at, at intersections primarily and casting shade on the parking of 41, or on felts, excuse me, what are the what are legitimate uh, landscape options to, to uh, replace those then uh, in their entirety. Uh, in, the, in the first, actually we're already using in the, in the project, and that's the Sylvester Palm. Uh, and this is actually uh, an early installation of here on the project. And uh, rainy day in Coral Gables, but uh, here you see a Montgomery Palm uh, street line and then the Sylvester again at the corner on the end cap. The other option 
uh, we're looking at and recommend uh, is the bridal veil tree. Uh, interesting tree, it's, it's more vase shaped uh, in its growth, it's an interesting bark, and uh, also in Coral Gables, Montgomery's leading to this tree form, and you see this car crossing down out in front, that, is, that tree actually is at the intersection again. So representative of, if you will, what it is we're talking about uh, with the modified plan as, as the point of 85 oaks, and are we gonna leave those oaks at no net cost, or are we gonna replace those uh, as well? The uh, options do, do come at a, a, a cost, and uh, with the remaining oaks and the option cost, which removes the oak tree, but the two trees that we're speaking of, or the palm and the tree that we're speaking <coughs> of, uh, have a greater cost. <coughs> These costs uh, get spread out along old 41, roughly about a $50,000 adjustment about a $40,000 adjustment on the side streets if we replace all the oaks there, which are 24 would remain after the um, uh, modified plan. And Feltz Ave has, still has 31 oak trees on it in the modified plan. And again, it's a little over $50,000 uh, uh, adjustment. In total, if we took the oaks out and used these optional trees and the bridal veil here by spec uh, 16 feet, which is four feet lower than the oak tree, uh, and this <coughs> Sylvester Palm spec is actually what we have on the job. These are, this is the range we would expect that those costs will be for a total removal of the oak tree from the modified plan. So it's sort of a two-step presentation here, presentation to a modified plan, and then from there, we've reduced the oaks. You know, if we took the oaks out, we would, we would be left in essence here. Kevin, thank, yeah. uh, Kevin, thank you. Um, you lost me a little bit, not because of your presentation, but you presented a lot. Um, so the step one leaves some oaks in and replaces them with what? Uh, the oaks don't get replaced in step one. No, they don't. Right. But what happens is we commit to remove 30 of the 60. Oh, so okay. what yeah. we're left yeah. with on 41 <coughs> in this case would be 30 oaks. And, and they get re when they remove, they get replaced with what? Palms? And, and th then these 30 that get removed get replaced with palms. Okay. And step two or those S other two step, comps says Step the two then says if, if I want to deal now with the right. leftover oaks, right. here are a couple options. And that would be the bridal veil and the other one you Or mentioned. the Sylvester. Correct. Sylvester. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I'm for step two along old 41. Just get rid of all the oaks on old 41. Can't keep them on the other two you know, side streets and I don't know felts, but for the businesses, I'd say no oaks on old 41. For visibility purposes and probably sidewalk, right? With the v roots. visibility, pulling up the sidewalks and also just the uh, mess with the leaves. Right, and the mess with the leaves. Mainly the mess with the leaves and so, the visibility. So. Uh, let me clarify what I'm hearing then from you, is that you also wouldn't choose the bridal veil tree, you would choose the palm tree. J yeah, the Sylvester. Is that what I hear? Correct. Okay. The, I, I like the look of the Sylvester on the uh, uh, intersections. Okay. Go, yeah, go ahead, Amy. I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, you, the, in your first step, you <laughs> had taken everything except the, the corner oaks out, correct? Uh, that's right. That's the general framework. So the thing, so that, so then on the corners, um, it probably a tree there would probably not inf interfere with the um, retail space there because because the stores don't go directly to the corners, right? Some of them do. Some will some will clip their right. corners, but I, I agree with you. But, and but what it's basically would be on the corners. Yeah. What our sense and, is, there's a little more space there. And c could yeah. you also just uh, give us? A little information about the bridal veil tree in, re in regard to how the shape of it does it impinge onto the, the sidewalk and everything? No, it. it uh, so here, here is here is a, a young bridal veil, uh, and and here's here's the older one in in the street in Coral Gables. So you can see the top of the 
uh, the automobile in terms of its where it's growing now and its limbs, uh, so it's up above any of the pedestrian way. So it's less dense up. than an oak. It's less dense, <coughs> excuse me, dense than an oak. It's okay. it's sort of a feathery. Feathery and uh, does it have what the leaves do the uh, so do, are they a problem on the sidewalk or do they just blow away because there's they're, they're, they'll blow away. They're, they're a lighter, uh -huh. yeah. And then this is this is interesting mm -hmm. bark of, of the trunk but here here to I think more specifically answer your mm -hmm. question the general shape of this mm -hmm. is is a vase shaped mm -hmm. so it's it's not round mm -hmm. it's not vertical it, it's it's sort of this mid midpoint in, in just as a description we would call that a vased shape mm -hmm. uh, habit and growth. there would, would there be any problem aesthetically of put <coughs> of using those on the old 41 corridor and then keeping the oaks on the other parts of the project? No, no, it no. Still would I, I, I think ahead. it still accomplishes it still would work the same. Together. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that the nature of what old 41 looks like would be aesthetically. Um, well, it would be compatible with the, just the the, uh, the palm trees there, I think, because they're not. A, it's not a terribly formal look to the to the stores along there. So I think that something a little more casual and softness would be good personally. But this is a matter of taste, I think. Uh, so, uh, but I would think the bridal veil would be a better look there down on there, and it would provide provide the shade, at least every once in a while. And I think. It, you could really define the corners. That's why I like your plan there, where you have something different on the corners, where the intersections, so that I like that plan. Yeah, right. Thanks, Amy. Anybody else? Uh, <laughs> Kevin. Peter? So ben Kevin. Ben Fred. Kevin, from a design perspective, what is your view of what we should be doing? What would look best? I, I would, personally, I, I would stay with a mix on Old uh, Forty One, and uh, what we've done is we've we've brought it very succinctly down and, and limited it very specifically uh, to these corners uh, with the bridal veil in place of the oaks and okay. I think that's that's a, a good direction. Fred? Oh, go ahead Mike. I, guess. Uh, I might just say ask each individual business that you're going to be putting one in front of uh, what they prefer because um, you know in, in the middle where Riverside Park is and the banyan tree on the other side obviously there's no businesses there um, but on you know as you head north um, you've got one right in front of Fidelity Real Estate. Um, you've got one right in front of Benson's, right midway. And, and that, that, as it grows out, that's a pretty wide uh, tree. Um, and then going the other way, you know, there's going to be other businesses that they're going to be right in front of. And, I, and I the think Gibbs of, presentation said, do not put any trees in front of a business. So One, one of the things to look to counsel for is, is direction. And I, it's, it's not that working with individual <coughs> businesses is, is a bad thing. I think what we want to put forth is a unified street. And so, if the if the choice is is Bridal Veil and uh, the Sylvesters, I think that's as fine a choice as well. It, it's um, I understand. I heard you know the presentation. I I I'd hate to have it be a bunch of individual choices, if you will, up and down the street. I think you want a unified street is really the goal. Mm -hmm. Mike, uh, Fred. <clears throat> well, I'd lean towards palm trees, but we do need some other than palm trees at key points such as the intersection. If you just have all palm trees, it's going to become somewhat boring. So it, it'll just look like a long tunnel. Uh, one, one question I was going to ask is Sylvester palms, are they, how are they on drop and prong? <laughs> versus the others, because that's, that's the one hazard with palm trees, which I'm not against the palm, but uh, that is a, uh, if a pedestrian or a bicyclist gets whacked with one, or the hood of a car, it's yeah, gonna. They, it's a good question. They're, they're a, a lot lighter in the, the palm tree, which is wonderful, graceful, but is, uh, is the culprit of that is the, the royal palm. Right. And we haven't recommended royal palms for that very reason. Right. Great, thanks. Council, any other questions, hmm. comments? Okay. Uh, Carl, go ahead. If yes. I might ask a question, Kevin, um, <clears throat> there's a concern obviously about visibility to the businesses from vehicles and, and I guess pedestrians as well. Um, 
What is the distance between these, typically the distance between these trees when they're planted? Say, for instance, in front of a business. <coughs> well, me. well, right now we're, we're dealing with uh, anywhere from, in a and most of them are now corner conditions, but you're 12 to 15 feet would be my, my approximation on those corners. Uh, what happens is when you move to the mid-block positions, you necessarily, uh, rather than being on the diagonal, you come a little closer to the building. That's where the, uh, as the mayor mentioned about Abacoa, the, the, the palm becomes a much more, uh, a better choice, simply because you are a little narrower. Okay. Um, and in terms of being in a vehicle or a pedestrian, people would be able to see the businesses? I believe so, I, I do. Okay, so does council have a particular direction as to what <coughs> you want us to do? I, we've I'd heard like to a number of different things. I'd like to suggest going forward with what Kevin has suggested uh, and in that context, accommodate Mike's point, Mike's point as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you want a cohesive, what I hear you saying is uh, you want a cohesive unified design. You think this will be a cohesive unified design. There's a concern about blocking views and take that into account as much as possible without cracking the unified design. Right. right. Is, my, is my suggestion. Mike, any other thoughts on that? Or? Um, well, you know, especially uh, Wilson to Reynolds, I, I would rather not see the, uh, the Bridal Vale or, any, or the Oaks. I'd be much happier with the uh, Sylvester Palms on the, that, those four corners there. Um, like I said, I'm no problem with it in the park. Um, just south of the park, um, I guess it'd still be all right there because I, I know that other side property has a lot of uh, deciduous trees on it. Uh, you don't have anything around the roundabout, um, so it's not until you get south of that. Um, yeah, the roundabout is actually all palms. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of the businesses that are on those other intersections. Um, but, but like I said, I just know Wilson to, to Reynolds, it would Im impede at least two directly and then possibly a third, so. And, and one last question of council for clarity. This is on old 41 only? Or That's my feelings, yeah. What is the, the going to option So the two. side streets and felts would, would stay with an oak tree? Well, whatever your presentation was. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Right. Do we do we have consensus here? Yeah. From council? I think so. Amy, is that okay? Yes. Greg? Fine. Yeah, that's fine. Steve? Yep. Pete? Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. You clear? Mm -hmm. you clear? Yep. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you very you much. Council. Appreciate and, that. Uh, no, Fred, I, go ahead. No, yes. I, I wanted to ask a question on the, the bridge. It, real simple. Is there any uh, problems with the lightweight concrete on wear and tear? Does it need sealing? Is there anything you can do to put extra durability in the surfaces? I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Simple answer. I, 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 let me get you an answer to that question. We've used lightweight concrete on bridge decks before. Okay. Uh, it, it's, I have not ever heard of an issue with that, but okay. certainly let me get you an answer to that question. Well, that's, no, that's the best answer. Uh, and it could yeah. be that they apply some kind of sealant, sealant and stuff that penetrates in and makes it less porous and more several uh, several bridges that we've done for Lee County in the past use lightweight concrete on on the deck okay uh, I don't remember a sealant being applied to it but uh, uh, deck, certainly I'll, I'll let me check on that the deck change. receives more wear and tear than the walks will yes yeah. yes so you convince me okay in the time we have left I'm council sorry, anything else I was going to say we, I don't think we could, yeah, we, I think we should take a break, although the finances are very important. We're yeah. going to have to get to the finances um, and go through them. And unfortunately, we have nine minutes, yeah. so. Did we, did we conclude that what we're doing on the bridge? I and mean, then are we going with the cable and the yeah. lightweight? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But is that okay, Kate? Um, spend no, a few more minutes on just, that. Well, it's an important decision. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we're fine there, Fred. Good. Any other comments on that, though, Fred? Because now is yeah. obviously the yeah. time. Okay. Um, we have eight minutes. We have finances. So, what do you recommend, Carl? I really don't know at this point. Council's pleasure. Can I suggest that we do the finances as part of the meeting, as at the latter part of the meeting, and we'll see where we are with time. 
I don't see we can do it in two minutes here. Okay. No. It doesn't do justice. Is that fine with sure. counsel? Okay, because it's important. We have to obviously drill down on that. Ann, that works with you, Ann? Okay, wonderful. It's um, 8.52. Why don't we take an eight-minute recess, and we'll convene at 9 o'clock. This workshop's uh, adjourned. Thank you.